Hi, this is some old guy coding again, and it's an exciting day. We're going to start a new project, and that new project is the mostly printed CNC machine by uh, by this gentleman here, uh, Alted. Um, he also has a website, and we'll look at that in a, in a minute. Um, if you're thinking about building one of these, there's uh, it uses electrical conduit that you can just buy from the hardware store. Um, it's different sized in Europe than it is in the U.S. So there's different versions of this machine depending on the, the size of the conduit that you have. Um, additionally, it will also work with the um, um, heavy-duty uh, galvanized and um, um, stainless steel uh, or tubing for uh, increased strength. But I'm going to go with the regular uh, U.S. conduit. And uh, we'll talk about a number of reasons why we're doing that here in a minute. But I just wanted to show you some of the information here. Uh, there's wonderful information on on Thingiverse about this project, uh, videos, and uh, it's very, very, very helpful. Here it has add-ons, uh, links to different things. Now let's take a look at uh, the website here. It's vicious1.com. So here you can actually take a look at the machine. You can uh, um, another picture of it. Uh, some great information here and what we can do with it. <clears throat> and if we go to uh, the shop, you can buy uh, bundles for the parts. And uh, here we go. So there's uh, the uh, hardware uh, kit. Uh, none of it includes the conduit, of course. It has to be supplied by your local hardware store or uh, home home improvement store. But it's the regular conduit, at least for the uh, United States, regular conduit is very inexpensive. It's about um, I don't know five bucks, probably four bucks, uh, ten foot length, uh, somewhere around in there. Uh, you can order the printed parts from him for the different sizes. And uh, or you can print them yourselves by downloading the parts off of uh, Thingiverse. There, <clears throat> uh, he also has uh, other parts here. Let's see, let's go back to parts. Uh, this is a wonderful page here because it has links to all the different parts to all the different sizes, and it's got the estimated times to run and how how heavy each part will be and how many of each part to make. Um, and here's a a breakdown of the uh, electronics parts. Very useful. And uh, down on the bottom here, uh, you can take this, print this out, and take it with you to the hardware store and uh, pick up the hardware that you'll be needing for this. Very, very nicely laid out. He also has uh, assembly instructions in here, too. So we go over there. <coughs> Uh, talks about the various different steps in the process here. Very nice. Very nicely laid out. One of the other things that's really cool here is you can use this calculator and there's one for uh, uh, imperial measurements like the US uses and another one for metric like the rest of the, the sane world. Um, and you can enter the size the, of your workspace that you want and the height. So <clears throat> I've got a very small workspace down there that I can use, small small space that I'm allowed in the basement um, to build one of these. So I'm going to make a 12 by 24 uh, workspace. I'd like to have it a little larger, but that's fine. Uh, if it works out and uh, 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 the boss likes it here, then uh, she'll let me build it a little bigger for some projects for her. The cool thing about this thing is it even tells you the size of the uh, um, table that you need to build. And these are some really nice numbers, so I just rounded it up to uh, 24 by 36. And uh, it's very easy numbers to work with. You can get a piece of uh, 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 fiberboard uh, easily, uh, you know, a two, by, uh, two foot by four foot section and cut it down. It's, it's very nice. So we've looked at the parts. Uh, we've looked at the website. Um, let's go back to the website once. And he talks about a lot of different things in here including uh, software. And one of the things he recommends here is this uh, ESTL CAM program. Now this is uh, the software to run the, uh, run the thing. This is ESTL CAM. Um, 
looks pretty cool. It's relatively inexpensive. You can also use it in the free version, which my understanding is causes a uh, 30 second delay before you can output each time, which is, is not terrible to use a wonderful product like this. Let's take a look at that. Let's see, I was hoping for a diagram on how to use that. There we go. And they've got excellent, uh, excellent tutorials on how to uh, how to make this work here, and how to uh, how to use it. Their manual is all video uh, uh, process, uh, video steps, and how to get things done. Um, very interesting and uh, very cool to watch. Uh, and it isn't an expensive program. And if you do use it, I would encourage you to, of course, uh, uh, pay for the program uh, once you're sure that it's working for you. Uh, to support continued development. Uh, it looks pretty cool. One thing is that this doesn't run on a Mac, so um, we're going to have to figure out a different way to run it here. I do have a PC laptop here, but it sure would be nice if I could get this running on my main computer. Uh, if you're a Windows user, then uh, there's no issues at all. So I imported the parts. Um, from the mostly printed CNC machine into um, uh, Design 123D from Autodesk. And just so I could put it on the proposed size of the workbench and see how things looked. And of course, it's going to be a noisy project here, so I, I plan to build an enclosure for it here to help to try to mitigate some of the noise and uh, <laughs> enabled it to continue its life downstairs without being uh, relegated to the garage. And of course we're going to need some sort of uh, uh, something to suck up the dust so we will have a shop back underneath which eventually I'll have to build a, a baffle box or something for just because of the, the noise of it. So this is the current plan. You can see there's some extra parts floating around here. You can just ignore those. Um, it's going to be two feet deep and three feet uh, wide and let's go ahead and take some of these guys out and hide them so we can take a look and see what's behind there. There we go. And we'll lose the extraneous board that's sitting there. And you can see that this is uh, the parts that are imported. Uh, not everything is quite exactly in its right spot but it's in general uh, close by. Uh, this is the proposed workspace We'll see what the actual workspace works out to be. It might be a little bit larger, smaller, or I'm hoping a little larger, but uh, uh, this assembly moved all the way over here to the right does take up some space, and the uh, <clears throat> the spindle will be right in the middle of the circle uh, formed by this this uh, this half here. I've been doing a lot of reading on this at uh, actually this is out of place, so we're going to pull that guy over. There, that's probably more correct. So I've been doing a lot of reading on this, of course, and research is to uh, use a uh, medium density fiberboard MDF and then uh, go ahead and make a slice between the feet and the workspace on one side and between the feet and the workspace on the other side. That way, uh, as the, uh, the workboard gets uh, damage because of accidental cuts underneath or too deep, um, that section can be swapped out easily with a, a new piece of MDF. The windows on here are going to be uh, uh, some very heavy plexiglass that I have laying around outside in the garage. <coughs> and You'll see that shortly here as we put it together. Um, on the actual unit that I've built downstairs, uh, there's a drawer here too, just underneath that will be a good spot for a computer to uh, to run the run the machine, uh, spot to put the bits, uh, etc. As you may have seen in one of my previous time lapse videos that I posted, I started printing this in um, Maker Geeks uh, Raptor Series PLA, which is a very very strong and durable PLA. But there was a couple of reasons I changed away from that. One, it is slightly flexible. And uh, what the important point in building this is that the parts are very rigid. So I moved back to a regular PLA. I'm using a PLA that I bought from Village Plastics 
uh, back when I got uh, the 3D printer a while back and uh, about 30 pounds of it at the time and I'm down to like my last reel after uh, printing this project but uh, parts seem very durable I printed everything at uh, 60 percent um, some of the parts on the vicious one website indicated a, a lower density but I set the first one at 60 and honestly I kind of forgot about it <clears throat> he does have one part in there that uh, is a uh, density of 70 but one nice thing about this being a Thingiverse project, of course, is that uh, many people out there have uh, posted mods for this. Uh, be careful if you're looking at the mod, mod uh, parts um, or the updated parts or changes. Uh, make sure that it works with the version of the uh, MPCNC that you're printing. Uh, um, the Vicious One has been very... Um, careful about giving uh, his new changes versions and keeping everybody up to date on that um, so just make sure that uh, your parts uh, or um, your mods that you'll be printing will work for that so instead of the corner that uh, was with the original or corner pieces that were with the original project I, I really like the looks of this corner piece here and we'll, we'll zoom into it here <coughs> I like that it's just uh, two pieces uh, the base and the top rather than having the spacer in the middle and uh, and then the fact that the belt tensioners are built in. I'll take a look at this picture here. I think it shows a little bit better how it works. Um, I like that idea. Now there's uh, the original project uses zip ties to tension the belts, and I thought this would be a little neater looking. I think in the long run. Um, so I have printed those parts. Uh, be careful. There are U.S. and uh, European versions of uh, of this project. And uh, this part here only has the uh, tensioners. Uh, then you have to click on one of these down here, and I'll click on the U.S. for the rest of the rest of the corner parts. So you can see there's some some fairly fairly heavy duty parts in here, um, designed to take uh, uh, inserts uh, that you melt into the plastic. Uh, you can buy those at. Uh, uh, See, it's McMaster Car, I believe you can buy those. Sometimes you can find them on eBay. That's where I bought some uh, just to have on hand. Now, where the rest of the U.S. version of the MPCNC uses English parts so you can source from the hardware store, uh, this corner, even though it's a U.S. corner, uh, it means it just fits the U.S. conduit. Uh, it does use metric parts, so just be aware of that. So I went ahead and ordered some metric parts for that you might be able to get by with something else in there. Uh, I didn't do any experimenting. I just want to write for the parts that he had specified in the uh, design here. And let's see, that would be back on the previous. Yeah, so if we dial in here, you can see that he's got this wonderfully laid out in here. Um, what size of parts you need and the inserts that uh, that he uses. So this is the this is the one that I printed, and this is the one that I'm going to build with, and we'll see how well it works. So I wanted to give you a little background. Um, about you know, 15, 20 years ago, I, I built a, a CNC machine of my own, of my own design. It was based on a little Dremel tool and engraving bits. Uh, I had to write the software um, because, of course, uh, well the plethora of information on the internet about this and projects and 3D printing really hadn't taken place yet so uh, all these wonderful projects uh, weren't there. You could buy CNC kits online but uh, I mostly just like to tinker um, so I, I built my own and this is what it looked like in the garage. I used stepper motors, threaded rod, uh, had fans over the stepper motors as uh, you can see. Now, these of course are are very old digital pictures back when this, they're all 640 by 480 and that's about the best you can get. Uh, 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 old PC with a PS2 keyboard so that's quite a while back. Um, I drove uh, the um, stepper motors directly from the PC through the parallel port um, uh, through a little card that I built that had some registers that would allow, you know, to, add, to be addressable and to put uh, stepping patterns through the different motors. Uh, let's see what else we have here. 
Uh, this is the early version uh, where everything was made from wood, including <laughs> including the carriage going across there, the X and Y. Everything everything was sliding on wood. Uh, later on, I did rebuild it with some tubing, which uh, of course is much more efficient once I, I proved the concept that it would, that would work. Uh, here's a uh, engraving I was doing. Of course, I was burning the wood there with that wonderful little Dremel tool going way too fast. Um, this is a drawing from a uh, Ivan Willock uh, uh, book with some some images in. I was doing that for my uncle. Oh, once again, this is the old one here where you can see that uh, it was uh, all wood on wood. So there I am, way back when working on the thing some early Saturday morning. It was back then. It was uh, great fun for me to get out early in the morning and uh, start working on things uh, on the weekends. Um, and I think we have some pictures of some projects that we made with these two. So let's see. Let's pull those in. <clears throat> so there we are. That's a picture of the updated CNC with uh, I used copper pipe, which was really stupid, but it, it worked well for for the lifetime of the project. And uh, eventually, it just took up too much space in the garage and had to go. But uh, so here I was making some uh, pencil holders for the company I worked at the time as uh, you know, gifts. Um, cut them on two by threes and then uh, my wife would uh, uh, finish them and then uh, paint the insides there. There's something else we had engraved with the old machine. Um, we had made, um, and this is of course 90 degrees rotated, um, a, uh, a door harps for uh, Christmas for uh, some people. And uh, here's a, a, wind, a wind harp, I believe it's called kind of fits inside the window there and we'll see a picture of that later hopefully here. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, one of the early boards that I tried. Uh, I was trying to use relays at the time and you know they just only last so long so eventually I did go to uh, uh, I think it was tip 120s that I used uh, to drive. Uh, a friend of mine wanted uh, <laughs> he does wood carving, and very nice wood carving, and uh, gave me a piece of his uh, basswood to uh, to engrave. I, you see the uh, A center of the A popped out there on me. But, uh, that was a nicely cut piece of wood there. Actually, some of them come out uh, quite nice. No, oh, there's the inside of the wind harp. That was a, a CNC cut hole in there. Gee, I was a lot thinner back then. <laughs> That's back to the original machine. It works. <laughs> Oh, there's an eagle. That's once once again a drawing out of um, uh, Ivan Willock's uh, one of his drawing or carving books. Um, I wrote the software to convert uh, images and drawings into uh, a CNC or you know effectively a motion code. Um, I used uh, well Visual Basic was all the craze back then. The the one of the early versions. So that's what I used. It would take a look at the image and and uh, find outlines and uh, then it would take the tool paths that it had generated and optimize those though to uh, so as to decrease the number of movements involved and that would output that to a, effectively a g-code file and that would be interpreted by the software on the PC running the CNC as to where to move it 
So on to bigger and better things with this new mostly printed CNC. For one thing, we're going to use um, something more powerful than a Dremel tool. The, uh, the plans call for using um, uh, another brand's uh, Rotozip tool effectively. Although uh, some people do put on a, a small lightweight router and uh, there are other routing spindles uh, or CNC spindles available online too. So lots of things to investigate and to learn about. And uh, here we go.